Grand Rising, my friends. Welcome back. Always a pleasure to see the most beautiful subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, you know what time it is. You don't want to be ugly. In the Milky Way and branching out with our tentacles of awesomeness to other galaxies. The market today is doing well. You know, look, this is all. We, it'll be funny for me to come back and look at this to see how things change. But these are the early days, even still. For those who have been in for even longer, 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 longer. I can only imagine how you must, <laughs> you know, how ancient it feels because it still feels like the early, early days. But with that, Bitcoin at $61,068, Ethereum at $4,347. I think that's its all time high. It's this website with all time highs. I'll take a look at that. I think that may be Ethereum's all time high. Ethereum is popping today, up oh, 11% in the past. 24 hours. Binance coin almost at 500, 494. Cardano at $2. Down some, quite honestly, uh, on the week. Solana shade under 200, 198. XRP at 107. Polkadot 42. Doge and Shiba Inu battling back and forth for 9th and 10th. Shiba Inu is making, making some moves out here with a market cap of 36 billion. But Doge is at 30 cents, and I'm gonna give in the future. I'm just gonna just kind of give sheep sheeps four zeros six six four zero six six two. I think it's like six six two eight or six six seven eight, even jumping back and forth. Earlier it was four zeros eight seven, and you know, I think it's gonna get to three zeros soon. When they get to that one penny, there will be parties everywhere for the sheep. <laughs> Look, I, I've learned to not fight the mean coins, you know? So I'm actually going to look at, um, I don't want to butcher the name of it. The spell of this S A I T A M A Saitama. It has, it's a, a, a ghost wolf. So I'm going to look at some Saitama it's super like, like eight zeros and something or seven zeros and something. It's like a, I think a, the supply of that is a hundred thousand trillion. <laughs> Oh man! So, but I'm gonna look at some. I've heard too many people mention it, you know, before it to get too much in the mainstream. So, so Saitama is another of these meme dog coins, and I'm, a, you know, the dog coins will be here throughout Bitcoin's life. So, you know, learn to love it. Doge is still here. People count it Doge out every time. Look, when I first got into it, I kind of doge out, but I've learned, like I said, I've, I've learned my lesson. So, Doge, Shiba Inu, Shiba Inu actually is doing some uh, pretty dope things with its um, Shiba Swap, and now they have a game that's coming out. I'm not going to be up today. So, let me just get to um, stocks was pretty good today. The uh, Everything was positive. The NASDAQ was up almost 1.5%, 1.39%. Tesla is just out here. It, 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 well, look. I know what's going to happen. I um, None of this is financial advice. None of this is medical advice, relationship advice, spiritual advice, advice on any matters or any subjects. But, you know, but to that, that's, none of this is advice and entertainment. Tesla. I was going to say, no, I'm, you know, I would say uh, through several different entities I'm involved in are uh, invested through Tesla. So. You know, it was one of the one of the investments. So, I'd like to see they do well. Caterpillar up four percent today. <sighs> you know, even with the supply, uh, Merck up. Is that Merck? Yeah, Merck is up six percent today. But, you know, they have that pill, and I know that they also authorize other companies to make their pill that can treat the COVID virus. So, I'm not exactly sure. If they the deal with them is like a licensing where these companies have to pay for their the right to make it or or what or what the details of that are. So we'll find out. So we're not gonna keep it too long. Ethereum is burning today. Not too happy with that number for superstitious reasons. I'm not a superstitious person, so 
<laughs> we hear about that positivity and that being a big part of it is you as a viewer write in the comment section something nice about someone who's important to you in your life and then sending them this video and saying, look what I wrote about you. I, I love you. This is why I did this. Or I admire you. I respect you. Or I despise you. And because of that, I became exceptional. <laughs> Whatever it may be, find it in your heart to do that if you can. Not, 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 no pressure. Feel free. It's always an option. I don't think no one else has said that. So I give that option. Stories. We got... Yeah, let me see what we, how you feel after you see it. I think it's a pretty good day, you know. Some possibilities of how you see it is it can be glass half full or half empty in that regard. Why the iron beam puts Israel iron dome to shame. So what is the iron beam? Let's get straight to it. The iron dome, for those who um, don't remember or not sure, is the state of Israel's defense system that uses short i would say short to medium range interceptor missiles which you know probably just if you think about it is the size of a say like a probably like i don't know the exact detail i'd look it up but let's say like a um a, a, a six foot tall person a, a, a missile about six foot tall and they shoot these probably longer than that probably they probably probably about them interceptors i hate that and i'm thinking it because i think they said it costs about and it's in here about um yeah, thousand, a hundred thousand to one hundred fifty. So they may be about eight to ten feet uh, long. You know, think of like a little telephone pole, but it's a missile, and so they have to shoot these at these um, missiles that are being shot, or mortars, or whatever they shooting over. Drones can come through the air at Israel, and now these the Iron Dome is good for. Uh, artillery, which are other rockets shot, but on a very predictable ballistic trajectory, meaning, you know, it takes off from a certain point, And when you start to calculate how it's moving, you can figure out where it's going to land. At, and so they can um, put it to mi um, a missile there to to intercept that course. So I, hence the name interceptor. Um, but it can get overwhelmed by drones, a lot of stuff, swarm of tactics or. Um, it will come here. I think you get overwhelmed. It says by swarm tactics. And it's not, you know, and, and, it, and, it, and it costs a lot of money for each, you know, and, and if somebody send a drone with a bomb on it, that probably costs $300 when you, you know, put it all together in terms of reality, how much it costs. And you shooting a hundred thousand dollar. And that's not even including, you know, all the other existing infrastructure to get that in the air. You know, it. It's not cost effective and you end up losing the battles over time because of that. It's, it's, it's cost prohibitive over time. So what the iron beam is, they're about to use some lasers. We've been talking about lasers on here plenty. You know that. So Israel has some lasers called the iron beam that they're going to. Now, they can only go seven kilometers in distance, so they don't go quite as far to interceptors. So they're thinking about they're way cheaper where it costs like a hundred thousand dollars 100k to shoot 100 to 150k it's only like 2,000 to shoot the beam off so they can 2,000 yeah, 2k so they can push uh, that that 2k 50 out here in this month <laughs> and actually it'd be 2k 22 2k 23 you know one uh that's a basketball game reference but saying that the game of war is gonna be played not futuristically but now if I'm just talking to myself anyway the iron beam, they're going to work as a complement to one another. So the iron beam closer to the front, you know, able to hit all the swarm tactics, the drones that try to come over, the short missiles. Um, it could destroy missiles, unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, and mortar shells. After four seconds, after the twin high energy fiber optic lasers make contact with their target. And then for the bigger things or other things, not, you still have the Iron Dome. So together, I think working together, they'll they're in there. They said it's still being held up in their, in their you know, uh, government. I did the you could probably see it in the, in the camera and bring it in closer. The quotation marks. Government, you know what that means? Who knows who makes all these decisions? But so Israel has. 
a laser system that they go be ready to put out there to complement their Iron Dome. So imagine our military bases. It was a story we have in a couple of days where we're gonna we're saying Iran attacked uh, U U.S. Uh, forces or tried to attack U.S. forces in Syria, but we got wind of it and dipped out. I mean, left left the location and. <laughs> before the, uh, but it look, you know, we'll we'll get to that story in a couple of days. I'm not sure if it's tomorrow or a couple of days. It's a couple of days. Facebook changes its name for this for you know seeing this this happened previous today. Me recording this with the day before for you seeing this. Um. Facebook has a parent organization. So a couple of years ago, Google has a lot of different businesses. It was getting really big. You know, just same way Amazon. Amazon may have to do this at one point. You know, Amazon has its shipping. Amazon has its online business. Amazon, 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 Amazon has its uh, web services, its cloud computing services. And so, <coughs> excuse me. Same thing with Google. Google started to go off in all different tangents and said, you know what, let's just pull back. And I think the government stepped in as well and said, we'll break these all off into little separate organizations, but have a parent company. And so basically Facebook is saying, look, we got Facebook, WhatsApp, Oculus, Instagram, and we're really trying to build off into the future of this metaverse. And we're going to talk, this is what the next two stories are going to be about from a innovation standpoint then also from a cryptocurrency standpoint the metaverse um but we're you know starting it off a little bit with this facebook announcement that they're going to that's what he wants to do call it so the new company we call meta who stands in the greek for beyond and it wants to reflect that the company wants to be one of the the originators of you know it's probably gonna be multiple metaverses is it gonna be one dominant metaverse i hope not you know that becomes that dystopian nightmare that you know it's talked about in one of the later sto uh, articles we're going to get to where you know all the stories always have one guy womp womp who takes over and becomes like a you know a god in the metaverse because this company built it but i think there'll be multiple metaverses sandbox is a metaverse as this right now decentraland there uh, are going to be metaverses created on a card on every separate blockchain to be quite honestly in terms of the uh, cryptocurrency landscape and I'm just thinking about how crazy. It goes. Let's get to it. Boom. Let's jump to it. So what is the metaverse? Metaverse changes everything. One day soon, I can't even pronounce um, most of this. Guy. I can't pronounce a lot of things over here. If you first time watching and uh, the I uh, don't trust anything anyone says. So always take everything with a grain of salt. Go read for yourself. If something I say pique your interest, go down those rabbit holes for yourself. One day soon, we'll be hanging NFTs on the walls of our digital homes. So this guy talked about he was in uh, Bob Iger's office at Disney, who was the CEO of Disney. And he was showing him some clips of what they're doing in CG. And this was a couple years ago, according to this author. And it, he couldn't tell the difference between what was real human beings and what was artificially made. He said the things we're doing, you know, and it's a quote I've always reminded of that any sufficiently advanced technology will appear as magic, you know. So talked about what is the metaverse and I get too deep into, you know, the whole history of the authors and where is that it just is basically boils down to a layer over our quote unquote real world. So the Internet at this point is like a rudimentary metaverse but the metaverse people envision is one where you can for all intents and purposes your senses will make you and your the experience will make you feel you are in that place so right now you know virtual reality gets very close to that if you ever had a virtual reality headset on in the right situation in game there have been times where it is almost indistinguishable from what you would say 
what was like if someone immediately take it off of you, you would be shocked and jarred by what you were going through was not actual reality at that moment. And if you haven't been in it, that's the truth. So, it, you know, not to sell it at all, but it's, it's not like that all the time. But there's periods where it's like, wow, you start to you, your mind can see how it can be tricked into um, uh, not, you know, be, being separate from where you think you are. Your consciousness is separate and separate. That goes to all the metaphysics consciousness. Not getting that right now. But anyway, so the metaverse is going to be this. It's going to, you know, either, you know, they're talking to here in the article, you know, maybe you'll be able to get it on like an app smartphone. <clears throat> in some sense, it'd be like that. I'm, I'm thinking of video games I played before where you could be playing a video game and your friend who couldn't be playing at the moment could have an app where they act like a drone in the sky. And it, it is a much different experience, but you technically in the game, you know, it's, it's not, you don't feel as visceral as actually playing a console game at the uh, same thing in the division um, too. At the, at the same time. But anyway, so the metaverse is going to be basically the web 3.0, the next level of the web where you have your glasses or contact lenses or, or your headset, you know, getting deeper into the technology, full body haptic suits, you know, where sight, smell, um, sensations, a feeling of, of, you know, a little bit of electricity to make you feel wet or cold or hot, you know, it, it's going to get, uh, it's going to get more than you can imagine. So Zuckerberg said, look, we're trying to get Facebook to go there. This is, they talked about his article. He's thinking about, this was written before saying he's talking about changing that. Yeah, he did. They changed it to Meta. Well, the parent company will be. So they said, think about this, that you're supposed to meet with your coworkers and said, instead of sitting in a physical representation of your office, because, you know, you're doing a Zoom call, each person in their digital avatar can see versions of them, digital versions of themselves where they can be in 1776 New York or in the future on a spaceship or in a zoo. You could choose to be dressed as a bunny rabbit or a dragon. And imagine with everything, you could play first person uh, video games, look like you're in a real life. You could take a British history class taught by a digital representation of King George III. You can visit Egypt and walk down the aisle with Nefertiti herself. You could float in space. You could pl uh, play red light, green light with your friends in the squid game. Ugh. You could play the game of the, was it the second or third night in the squid game with your friends? Then they said also, don't be surprised to see people in hateful extremist rallies and people who choose uh, dangerous avatars, hackers stealing from people or performing metaversal terrorism. These are all things to expect. All of these things could be for sale in crypto where we buy and sell digital goods with Bitcoin or Ethereum. So now you start to see how these converging technologies all start to come together. So all for all the talking really ridicule about NFTs, the metaverse is where they start to actually make sense. Perhaps if you own a Beeple digital NFT for $70 million, you can show it in your house. You can charge people money to come see it. If you had a crypto punk, they said you could wear it in a metaverse or board ape. You could wear it in the metaverse as you walk around. If you own an Art Wars helmet, you could have that. And I think they said that after you get the helmets, they'll get a suit of armors to go with it. So yeah, you could wear that. In the um in the metaverse, your NFTs that you buy, the avatars. The next layer that is going to be placed on top of the world we live in today is the metaverse. And that is the truth. That is the truth. So what did, what do we learn from this? How to make money from it. That's what we need to know. So they're talking about this um in the sense of what all three Crypto in particular, Bitcoin, Ethereum, now so deeply entrenched among the elite in the United States and Europe that for it to disappear would take a lot more than a price crash or deflation for it to cease to be relevant. And a Chinese style ban is getting less and less likely. Talking about like they're going to say we're going to ban it. And we're going to talk about that in a couple of days too. China's going to reverse their ban at, at some point. Don't get it twisted. They always do this. 
Now they realize and they don't have the impact on their price like they used to. And they don't want to be like, oh, they don't want to be left behind. So they're, they're not stupid. Now that there are Bitcoin ETF trading countries such as El Salvador officially recognizing it and even Bitcoin ATM machines coming into Walmart, there is less chance day by day. That, man, there's been less chance for a while. This person must be really new to it, but it's all good. It's all good. So they're just talking about that because of the why, how they get this convergence at once of cryptocurrency, NFTs, which are, you know, a subset of the cryptocurrencies and the metaverse have come together is in the sense where the financial system is collapsing. Most people feel that way. They see a lot of printing of money, the inflation of prices and say that you can see the the, the, the uh, you know, we saw that the, what happened, you know, we, we see it with the banks, what happened in 2008. It's not a surprise to anyone. Because of this, crypto became part of an important part of our world. The metaverse is as yet a fictional projection of the future of the ways that humans interact online. While the common understanding of the term is leaning towards a shadow commercialized extension found in Web 2.0, um, the use of blockchain, crypto, and even NFTs concepts to making an organic and spontaneous move to Web 3 potential is its greatest power. But beyond that, the what made NFTs important. So crypto solved a problem with in financial markets of a central authority making decisions arbitrarily for everyone else. Because with cryptocurrency, it's everyone can see what the rules are and the rules don't change. You know, as I, as I tell my sons like math, the rules don't change. NFTs allow artists to be paid for their work and not for that money to be stolen by others. So if you or a recording artist and you, um, you know, digitized or, or NFT uh, tokenized, tokenized is the terminology, tokenized your product, then in the Houston system, whenever it's played or however it will go work, you will be the one who, you know, benefits from that or if you sold it you'll get a percentage of whatever you had written off on that is sold you get a percentage of that you know however the nft is set up the contract is set up you can be paid fairly for the use of your product so something to think about it's going to be an exciting world so you should be heavy into cryptos at this point you should be almost to this Heavily into, if you're listening to me and following this, you should be, or thinking about not following nothing, but, you know, thinking for yourself, you should be thinking, how can you invest in stocks? How can you invest in cryptos? And should you invest in real estate? I mean, yeah, I mean, at some point, if you, you know, once you kind of have got those two down, because that's easier to build off and, and, and get wealth faster for less now, then yeah, hundred percent real estate in the real world, but also virtual estate. I don't know what we gonna call it. You should be looking at that in crypto. <laughs> you know, I was telling somebody I'm gonna buy a plot or two or a couple in in a sandbox, which is a decentralized metaverse that exists now. So if this metaverse could be a thing, I'm going for first movers. Those are the ones who have been around. So sandbox, decentraland, start buying. Sandbox has its own cryptocurrency, sand. Start grabbing some of that. Just, you know, not much. Just stacking it up. Because 10 years down the line, the little bits I bought could not could be tremendous amounts in the future. So, you know, taking a long game. Speaking of that, the U.S. dollar as we know it will be dead in 10 years. Bitcoin price to hit 2 million and 5. People always try to hit you with the, you know, uh, you know if you see with me, I'm not with the, weird faces on the on the thumbnails and the predictions you know we're not going down like that if i start doing that then you know anybody who know me check me come up and just you can try to swing on me i wouldn't recommend that but you know you can always tell me like hey dude what you doing out here man you, you doing that now with the faces like <laughs> i'm not doing any of that garbage um, so this, these individuals are just saying kind of thing we were, I was just talking about. We reached peak debt, pre and peak debt and peak money printing 
and see that as a solution to our problems. The growth of the money supply has almost gone vertical. And now this is how inflation, which could become hyperinflation, which Jack Dorsey was espousing on Twitter the other day or somewhere. I think it could have been Twitter. You'd be surprised if he's talked somewhere else besides Twitter as being a CEO of Twitter, but who knows? But Kathy Woods from Arkevest said, no, 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 things about to get deflationary soon. So we'll keep an eye on it. But no, they, they were just saying things we we're just talking about. The existing dollar would be dead. Until, I don't, you know, this is, I think, a bit of hyperbole. The dollar is going to be dead. This is all that. You know, look, do I think the dollar is going to be weakened as its role as the reserve currency of the world, the United States dollar? Yes. Do I think any other currency is going to take its place? Um, um, I'm sorry, a government-backed central currency? No. Do I think within 10 years, Bitcoin will be seen as people, as how things are thought of in? Yes. And that's hard for a lot of people to understand that. And that's why, you know, start now that you're not thinking of it in, well, once it become a million dollars, I'm going to sell my Bitcoin, get that million dollars. No. Once it's a million dollars, whatever, whatever you got, say if you got point zero one, when your point zero one is a million dollars, you hold on to that. You take loans out against your Bitcoin, it's property. You don't sell your million dollar property unless you need to, unless it's dire circumstances. But other than that, you take loans out against that. And we will discuss that further in the future when we get to that closer to that point, which may not be longer than we think, but who knows? But you not you know at some point yeah you may want to take profits you know but taking profits now could be going into a stable coin to buy into something else that may be ready to pump meaning go up when you see something going down say for instance shiba inu is up like if you had bought it when we were talking about it a, a month or two ago three two two months or you know sometime back or any of these things we were talking about a couple months back and you're up you see you're up 200 percent. you see you have 70 percent. you may say you know what I must sell out what I already put into this. So you put in $100 in Shiba Inu is now worth, you know, it was worth $800 yesterday. Now it was worth six sixty today. Sell off maybe that $100 of Shiba Inu, whatever it is, however much it is, sell that off. Then, but, but put that into like USDC or Tether, whatever you like, you know, Binance, USD, whatever your coin is, your stable coin, and say, let me see what else I want to pivot to. You know, I want to look at um, <clears throat> that that moonshot that you know. I was just talking about that. Say 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 Tama say Tama. Uh, I gotta look what's how it's pronounced. Say Tama. Uh, whatever you want. None of this financial advice is some way to think about things. Then that way you say, you know what? I took out the money I put in, so everything else is kind of just like free money that I that came from nowhere. I can let it ride for 10 years, or I could sell it all now and take it, it take my whole profits and run with it. But either way, I can't stress out about it because this money, I, you know, I got my money back. I got my, and that's, that's crypto. Some other things, you got to wait for like three or four years to get your money you put into it back. But crypto, that can be in a month. Then you can move on. So, you know, it is what it is. But I'm not going to keep you too long today. I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.